Hello everyone! Even though many of us love traveling by plane, only few people know what actually happens on board. But crew members know everything, even the things you've never thought of. In today's episode, we're going to uncover some of the most intriguing secrets of plane travel. Get comfortable in front of your screen and let's roll! Have you ever wondered why flight attendants close the plane doors long before its takeoff and don't open them right when the plane lands and stops moving? Experienced passengers believe that some airlines pay their flight attendants only for the time when the doors are closed, so letting you out of the plane too early is just against their own interests. If you take a look at a plane's wing, you might find that many of the screws in its cover are missing. This is not uncommon, however. Screws have a tendency to fall out of their holes. According to technical inspectors, this is not dangerous, as long as you make sure that not too many screws are missing. Shockingly, exotic animals, birds and reptiles are transported in the plane's cargo hold together with the rest of the baggage, and quite possibly, dead bodies, that normally go to the cargo hold too, and sometimes dead bodies leak, turning the cargo bay into a total mess. This isn't as common as leaking fish, however. Thinking about this isn't really scary, but just yikes. Flight attendants warn. A glass in the sky equals two glasses on the ground. And that's true. The high flight altitude enhances the effect of alcohol. So if this is the way you choose to cope with your flight anxiety, try not to get hammered. If you think that only highly experienced pilots work for commercial airlines, you're wrong. Even when you buy an expensive ticket from a luxury airline, there's still a chance you get to fly with a subcontractor's crew, and their pilots might not be as experienced and probably are not as highly paid. Pilots don't care if you make it to your destination on time either. Planes hardly ever fly at their top speed to save fuel. It happens only by order of the airline or when the pilots have no more flights scheduled for today. Looking through a window of a flying plane at the world outside is probably the most enjoyable part of plane travel. But few people know why these windows are made round. The round shape of the plane itself, as well as its windows and doors, is a safety measure. Due to the absence of sharp angles, the pressure and temperature differences are distributed more evenly, which prevents the appearance of cracks so that the cabin doesn't depressurize and get literally torn apart. The thing is, during the takeoff and climb, the ambient pressure falls faster than the pressure inside the cabin. It creates a pressure differential, which leads to fuselage extension. Flight attendants ask passengers to keep window shades open during takeoff and landing to be able to quickly assess the situation outside in case of emergency and decide which side of the plane is safer for evacuation. This also lets natural light in the cabin, which might be helpful if the lighting system fails. And in case the plane turns over, it helps the passengers and the crew not to get completely disoriented. Have you ever wondered why most plane seats are blue? Maybe that's because blue is the color of the sky? No, it's not that simple. Well, the answer is simple, but not as obvious. There's two reasons why plane seats are mostly blue. First, it's practical. The signs of wear, stains and dirt are not as visible on blue, which means the seats just last longer. You can see seats of other colors in business class, because a lot fewer people get to sit on them, and the fabric doesn't wear out as fast. Secondly, according to numerous studies, most passengers, even those who don't suffer from aerophobia, associate the color blue with safety, and they tend to choose the airline by its colors. A life vest can save someone's life in a plane crash, but the horrible truth is that there might not be a life vest under your seat. Some passengers just take them as souvenirs, while crew members rarely check if there is a life vest under every seat. As a result, out of 150 passengers of the famous flight 1549 that nearly crashed on the Hudson River in 2009, only 33 had life vests. So before you take off next time, check if you have it under your seat, because it might actually save your life. As you all know, flight attendants ask passengers to turn off all their electronic devices before takeoff. And if an annoying passenger asks why they should do it, the answer usually is that cell phones and laptops interfere with the plane's communication and navigation systems. But it's not like that anymore. 
Cell phones and other electronic devices have made quite a bit of progress over time, and according to recent studies, they cause no significant interference with the work of the plane systems. So, in 2014, the European Aviation Safety Agency officially cancelled this outdated restriction. Some airlines still adhere to it, though, but its complete cancellation is just a matter of time now. Other airlines restrict only the use of headphones during takeoff and landing, so that the passengers don't miss any important announcements. Seems like the cockpit in a plane should be designed in such a way that nothing distracts the pilots from their work, but that's not the case. The pilots who frequently fly in the westward direction during the sunset hours have publicly stated that they sometimes have to cover the windscreen with whatever's at hand, from maps to trays, to protect themselves from the blinding sunlight. And even though the radars accurately show the location of the plane, it's still kinda scary to know that your pilot might be almost completely blind on a sunny evening. Every functioning plane in the world gets struck by lightning at least once a year. Apparently, it's not a big deal. The design of modern planes ensures the protection of all electrical and fuel systems from an up to 30,000 ampere lightning strike. When the body of a plane gets struck by lightning, the electricity passes through the outer aluminum layer of the fuselage without causing any real damage. The protection works so well that in most cases the passengers don't even realize that their plane has just been struck by lightning. The lightning might just leave a mark at the spot of the strike, and that's about it. There are special static dischargers on the ends of both wings that remove static electricity from the plane in case of a lightning strike. All electronics are also shielded, which protects it from electromagnetic radiation caused by lightning. When a plane is landing at night, the lights in the cabin go dim, so that passengers' eyes get used to the lack of light outside. It might help in case of possible evacuation. This way, the aisle lights that show the direction to exits will also be more visible. It also helps better assess the situation outside, so don't get angry if it gets too hard to read during landing. The seats in the back of the plane are likely to provide a bumpier ride than the seats by the wings. The middle part of the plane doesn't move as much when it's in the air. Moreover, the flow of air usually goes towards the tail, so the coolest air will be at the front and the warmest at the back. But curiously, the seats at the back are considered the safest. The thing is, the impact of the plane hitting the ground doesn't affect its tail as much as its nose. When a plane hits turbulence, for the passengers it feels like driving on a bumpy road due to changes in the air pressure outside. This is the moment when most passengers start getting nervous, because it feels like the plane falls through the air. But the fact is that turbulence cannot do any harm to the plane. What pilots really worry about during turbulence is the upward flow of warm, humid air. If it hits the plane, it can cause it to gain dangerous altitude. Airlines tend to cancel dangerous flights to mitigate the risks, and the crew never tells the passengers about such things so as not to cause panic. If you're always trying to be among the first to board, hoping to get to your seat faster, here's a recommendation for you – just go last. This way, when you get inside the cabin, you won't have to waste time standing in line waiting for everyone else to take their seats. And it seems like an endless torture. But when you board last, you'll see that everyone else is already seated, and it will be much easier to get to your seat. And since everyone else is already seated, you can take any empty seat you want. As it often turns out, the flight might not be packed with passengers, and the rows in the back might be empty. Who knows, maybe you'll get to seat by the window, or occupy a whole row. That being said, don't be late for boarding. A flight delay costs the airline a ton of money, so they'd rather take off on time, but without you on board. According to a study conducted in the US, 56% of pilots have fallen asleep on the flight. Moreover, 29% of them confessed that when they woke up from sleep, they found that their second pilot was also sleeping. The most exhausting for the crew are non-stop flights that last for over 18 hours, covering the distance of more than 9,000 miles or 15,000 kilometers. During such flights, the crew desperately needs a chance to have some rest away from the cabin and the cockpit. According to the rules, there's always one pilot in the cockpit and one flight attendant in the cabin. The pilots and the flight attendants are guaranteed up to 5 hours of rest during such flights. Airlines are trying to give their crews everything they need to rest well. Even though they cannot even stand tall, they at least have a comfy bed to lie in and have a nap.
Depending on the model of the plane, the break room is located either under or over the cabin, or in the cabin itself. Even though the main goal of any airline is to allocate as much room in the plane for passengers as possible, the crew doesn't really suffer from a lack of space. This Boeing 787 break room for flight attendants is located above the cabin, and there are five beds in it. So if it looks like your flight attendant has just disappeared, maybe they're sleeping right above your head. Passengers are always told about how their oxygen mask can save their life in case of emergency. What they don't tell you is that there's enough oxygen in the container for just 12 to 15 minutes of breathing. After that time, the mask becomes just as useless as a makeup bag. Every plane has some extra fuel in reserve to be able to fly around a thunderstorm or to make it to another airport if the destination airport is closed due to unfavorable weather conditions. There's enough fuel in reserve for about 45 minutes of extra flight time. So when you hear a message from the crew about a thunderstorm ahead, start counting minutes. No, you won't crash, probably, but you might have to land in another airport. A crowded, confined space stale air, a lot of dusty surfaces, and untidy passengers. A plane is an incubator for infectious bacteria and viruses, so wipe your table thoroughly before a meal. The passenger before you might have used it to change diapers for their child. And never take your shoes off on a plane. Someone could have vomited on the floor right under your seat. According to the rules accepted by most airlines, the pillows and blankets used by passengers are washed once in every five days. It means like a dozen flights, so the pillow you get might have already been used by a dozen passengers without a wash. And you never know how healthy those people were. Some airlines don't adhere even to these rules, though, and wash their pillows and blankets even more rarely. So you might get a blanket that hasn't been washed after that one time last year. Even though the toilets and septics on planes are regularly treated with special chemicals, some of the bacteria survive and after some time develop strong immunity to any chemicals. Talking about tap water, well, God forbid you drink it. Here's what you need to know. The toilet drain and water refill hoses are in like half a meter apart from each other, and most likely they're serviced simultaneously and with no strict adherence to the hygiene requirements. Since pilots are responsible for the lives of so many people, there are special requirements in terms of food they need to fulfill. In particular, the food they eat on board. So the captain and the first officer get their meals with a one-hour gap, and they never get the same food, so that both of them don't get food poisoning. If one of them gets sick, the other one can always take control of the plane. Sometimes pilots are asked not to eat the same food before the flight too, or even not to eat at the same place. Rumor has it that, unlike passengers, pilots actually enjoy difficult landings and think they are necessary to keep them in shape. A survey conducted among Eastern European pilots revealed that their favorite airports to land are Gibraltar, Naples, and Madeira, the most difficult airports in Europe in terms of landing. Hope this doesn't make you feel nervous if you're flying in one of those places. In order to break even, the airline needs to sell at least 75% of seats in every flight so they normally put more seats up for booking than there actually are on board. That's because some passengers don't show up for the booked flight, and taking off with empty seats is just unprofitable. But in case all tickets are sold and all of the passengers show up at the gate, there just won't be enough seats for everyone. The airlines tend to resolve such conflicts peacefully. They offer their passengers bonuses if they agree to take one of the next flights. But if a victim of overbooking refuses to leave the plane, the security service forces them out, so that the plane could take off on time. Even if a plane gets stolen during a flight, the services on the ground will know about it. In such cases, the pilots follow a special instruction. They don't retract flaps to extend the landing time, so that the special services could understand that something bad is going on on board. According to statistics, flying is the safest way of traveling these days, but it's still a stress test to the human body, so we advise you to be careful. Alright, that's all for today. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and also hit that notification bell. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time!